What's up, y'all? Coming here live from London. Extremely humble, grateful, and blessed. We are breaking down all of the recent allegations against Sean P. Diddy Combs as he faces now several lawsuits, including a bombshell one dropped by a former producer accusing him of sexual assault and sex trafficking. Welcome to Sidebar, presented by Law & Crime. I'm Jesse Weber. So if you've been on social media recently or you've been perusing different news sites, you may have seen a lot about P. Diddy and these sexual misconduct allegations. There is a lot there. So we thought let's break it down for you as to what is actually going on. These are going to be the biggest accusations currently against P. Diddy. So P. Diddy, Puff Daddy, Diddy, real name Sean Combs, is of course a well-known music mogul, founder of Bad Boy Records, an influential producer, the founder of a clothing line, a singer, an actor. Now you might recall that we previously reported on a huge lawsuit filed against Combs by his ex-girlfriend Cassandra Ventura back on November 16th, 2023. At the time, Ventura alleged that Combs physically and sexually abused her, including forcing her into sexual slavery and sex trafficking. And some of the more alarming allegations in that federal lawsuit included Combs allegedly raping Ventura in her home after she tried to leave him, savagely beating her, resulting in bruises and burst lips, forcing her to have sex with prostitutes on video while he watched and masturbated, forced her to carry a gun for him and tried to chase down music producer Suge Knight with a gun. Even she accused him of blowing up rapper Kid Cudi's car because he found out that Cuddy was interested in Ventura. Yeah, it was wild. We covered it here. And she sued him under New York's Adult Survivors Act. That was a law that gave survivors of sexual assault a one-year window to file lawsuits if their claims were otherwise time-barred under the statute of limitations. Now, Ventura had told CBS at the time, quote, After years in silence and darkness, I am finally ready to tell my story and to speak up on behalf of myself and for the benefit of other women who face violence and abuse in their relationships. With the expiration of New York's Adult Survivors Act fast approaching, it became clear that this was an opportunity to speak up about the trauma I have experienced and that I will be recovering from for the rest of my life. Now, just one day after filing this lawsuit in New York federal court, Combs and Ventura agreed to a settlement. Now, as with most settlements, it was confidential. We do not know the terms. Ventura released a statement saying, quote, I have decided to resolve this matter amicably on terms that I have some level of control. I want to thank my family, fans, and lawyers for their unwavering support. Combs released his own statement saying, quote, We have decided to resolve this matter amicably. I wish Cassie and her family all the best. Love. Now, Ben Braffman, who is an attorney for Sean Combs, released a statement saying, quote, just so we're clear, a decision to settle a lawsuit, especially in 2023, is in no way an admission of wrongdoing. Mr. Combs' decision to settle the lawsuit does not in any way undermine his flat-out denial of the claims. He's happy they got to a mutual settlement and wishes Ms. Ventura the best. But you have to imagine, in a way, although this came out and these allegations came out, this was a win for Combs in a way, right? Sure, really bad publicity. Terrible allegations, but when you settle, it doesn't stay in the news. You don't go to trial. These details aren't revealed at a trial or even in pretrial discovery. This isn't like Johnny Depp, Amber Heard, where arguably one of the motivations for Johnny Depp to sue his ex wife to take it to trial was to make sure all the evidence did come out because he wanted to prove that he did not abuse her and he wanted to rehabilitate his image. This after Heard had alluded that she was a victim of domestic violence at his hands. This with Combs is very different. Definitely want to keep it quiet. But then what happens? Days after settling, Combs is hit with another lawsuit filed in New York. A woman named Joy Dickerson Neal claimed that Combs drugged and sexually assaulted her when she was in college back in 1991. She alleged Combs filmed the rape, shared the video with others as a form of revenge porn, Dickerson Neal claimed this severely affected her mental health and resulted in her leaving college. And like with Ventura, this lawsuit was filed pursuant to New York's Adult Survivors Act. But actually, this was filed in the Manhattan Supreme Court just one day before the window to sue closed. Diddy denied the allegations. In a statement from his spokesperson released to People, it said, quote, This last-minute lawsuit is an example of how a well-intentioned law can be turned on its head. Ms. Dickerson's 32-year-old story is made up and not credible. Mr. Combs never assaulted her, and she implicates companies that did not exist. This is purely a money grab and nothing more. 
as far as we see that lawsuit is still pending. But there is something to think about. Could these allegations be true? Yes, absolutely. Could the allegations against Ventura be true? Yes, absolutely. However, one of the reasons that we see celebrities and high-profile people decide to fight these cases and not settle is because they are concerned about the floodgates argument, right? If you settle with one person, you're going to have to settle with all of them. Now, we haven't seen a settlement in this case, but remember, this lawsuit came out after the Ventura settlement. doesn't take away from the legitimacy of the claims, but just something to think about. But then what happens next, right? A third lawsuit comes out in New York. This time, an unidentified woman claims that Combs and singer-songwriter Aaron Hall raped her 30 years ago. Combs' spokesperson released another statement after this one saying these are fabricated claims, falsely alleging misconduct from over 30 years ago and filed at the last minute. This is nothing but a money grab. Because of Mr. Combs' fame and success, he is an easy target for anonymous accusers who lie without conscience or consequence for financial benefit. It goes on to state, quote, the New York legislature surely did not intend or expect the Adult Survivors Act to be exploited by scammers. The public should be skeptical and not rush to accept these bogus allegations. But then you fast forward to December 2023. Another lawsuit comes out. Another unidentified woman has accused Combs, former bad boy entertainment president Harvey Pierre, and another person of sex trafficking and gang raping her when she was just 17 years old. She said that she was flown from Michigan to New York City, supplied with drugs and alcohol, and then assaulted at Combs' recording studio. The same day of this lawsuit, Combs issued a statement on Instagram saying, quote, enough is enough. For the last couple of weeks, I have sat silently and watched people try to assassinate my character, destroy my reputation and my legacy. Sickening allegations have been made against me by individuals looking for a quick payday. Let me be absolutely clear. I did not do any of the awful things being alleged. I will fight for my name, my family, and for the truth. By the way, a little side note about these lawsuits. They may be able to be legally brought, right? But they can still be difficult to prove. When you're talking about the age of these claims, witnesses' memories fade. Evidence gets stale. It's not impossible to prove the case, but it can be difficult. And I say that because, remember, you can have a witness and a victim testify, a survivor testify, that could be sufficient in order to prove the claim. Maybe you have a few corroborating witnesses. That could be it. This isn't a criminal trial, by the way. The standard of proof in a civil case is much lower. Look at the E. Jean Carroll case against Donald Trump. And from an optics point of view, this arguably has hurt Sean Combs. I mean, he stepped down from his position as chairman of Revolt TV, the media company he had founded. He's now on the defensive. But that is not the end of the story. No, 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 no. It is just the beginning. Because now, producer Rodney Little Rod Jones has filed a massive, reportedly $30 million federal lawsuit against Combs and others alleging sexual assault, harassment, and an illicit criminal enterprise. This lawsuit by Jones is 75 pages. It lists out 15 separate causes of action, and we're going to go through them. But this lawsuit is against Combs, his son Justin Combs, Various associates and entities like Chalice Recording Studios, Love Records, Motown Records, Combs Global Enterprises, and Universal Music Group. So the complaint starts off by explaining that Jones produced nine songs for Combs on his Love album and actually lived with Sean Combs for a period of time. And how, quote, throughout his time with Mr. Combs, Mr. Jones witnessed, experienced, and endured many things that went far beyond his role as a producer on the Love album. Mr. Combs required Mr. Jones to record him constantly. On several occasions, Mr. Combs took Mr. Jones' cell phone and began recording himself. As a result, Mr. Jones has secured hundreds of hours of footage and audio recordings of Mr. Combs, his staff, and his guests engaging in serious illegal activity. Now, Jones says that those videos show drugs like ecstasy and cocaine, the displaying of unregistered firearms, Combs spiking drinks for minors and sex workers, Combs' son Christian drugging and sexually assaulting a woman, and even a famous actor sexually harassing and assaulting Jones. Now, Jones alleged numerous events in these papers. For example, Jones, who identifies as a heterosexual Christian man, claims that Combs repeatedly and intentionally groped his private parts without his consent, that this happened in 
L.A., New York, Florida, the Virgin Islands, and that Combs also continually forced Jones to be in his presence while he was naked and showered. So with that, Jones is suing Combs for a claim of sexual assault and harassment. Jones says that this resulted in severe emotional distress and anxiety. And as we go through some of these claims, keep in mind what he alleged that he suffered as a result of Combs' action. This is the injury or harm element that you need for the purposes of damages. What happened to you? What did you suffer? Meaning, what could Jones recover? Let's keep that in mind. But Jones claims that Combs attempted to groom him into homosexual sex. And one of the ways that Jones says Combs tried to do that was by using producer Stephen Aaron Jordan, who Jones apparently looked up to. Combs allegedly showed Jones a video of Jordan engaging in a sex act with another man as a way to, quote, ease his anxiety concerning homosexuality. And included in this complaint are alleged screenshots of that purported video. By the way, Jones alleges that Combs has hidden cameras in every room of his various homes and that he has secret recordings of celebrities and associates, this compromising footage of every person that has attended his parties, which, by the way, from a legal point of view, would be a violation of civil privacy laws and criminal privacy laws, perhaps even implicate revenge porn type statutes. Anyway, continuing on with this alleged grooming campaign, Combs even allegedly admitted that he had engaged in sexual intercourse with, quote, an unidentified Philadelphia rapper who dated Nicki Minaj, as well as, quote, an R&B singer who performed at the Super Bowl. Hmm. Now, there are those who have speculated online that that Philly rapper is Meek Mill, and the R&B singer who performed at the Super Bowl could be Usher. On Twitter, X, Meek Mill posted on his account, quote, one love to the gay people, but then talked about in graphic detail how he much prefers or loves a certain part of the female anatomy. He wrote, quote, every black blog site enhanced that post to make me seem gay. I change laws for our people. I donate millions. They are designed to destroy the image of black leaders. It can't work with me, though. You got to really kill me, and I still will get bigger after death. This God, not me, LOL. Now, one of the people to jump into the mix online was actually social media influencer and former kickboxer Andrew Tate. As you know, we covered Tate's legal troubles in Romania before here on Sidebar as he's facing charges of rape, sex trafficking, and sexual exploitation. But Tate posted the question on Twitter, quote, So P. Diddy was having sex with Meek Mill and Usher? Meek Mill responded, Was you sex trafficking women? TF wrong with you, Brody. Tate responded, I only asked a question because everyone is saying it happened. It's true or not. As for Usher, as far as we could see, he didn't respond to any of the assertions in this lawsuit. And you could argue, why should he, as he's not directly mentioned by name or implicated. But something that has created a bit of buzz online is an interview that Usher did years back on the Howard Stern show, where he talked about living with Sean Combs as a teenager, as part of P. Diddy's, what's called Puffy's Flavor Camp. He said, quote, I got a chance to see some things. I went there to see the lifestyle, and I saw it. It was pretty wild. It was crazy. They called me Baby Boo. He went on to say he wasn't disciplinary. He was letting me be a young man. And, quote, I will always look at him like a brother. But when he was asked if he would send his children to the camp, he responded, quote, hell no. Quick note, by the way, another high-profile celebrity jumped into the mix as well with all of this Diddy controversy going on, and that's comedian Cat Williams. You might have heard about this because in an interview with Vlad TV recently, he said he had attended one of Diddy's parties where he found out it was just men there, and he claimed that Diddy had tried to stop him from leaving, making strange suggestive comments, even threatening and harassing him at one point. Williams had gone on to say, quote, I am not gay, and I am not going to sleep with you. Okay, but moving forward in the lawsuit, Jones claims that on Thanksgiving Day 2022, Combs offered Jones cocaine, and then rapper Young Miami, her female cousin or assistant, identified as Jane Doe 1, tried to sexually assault Jones, including in front of Combs. And Jones, in fact, again, attached screenshots from a video of Combs, Jones, Young Miami, and Jane Doe 1 on that day. Now, this makes up the fourth listed cause of action in the lawsuit. He is suing Jane Doe 1 for sexual assault. Jones says that her actions were willful and malicious and frightened him. He's also suing her for both negligent and intentional infliction of emotional distress. By the way, he also ends up suing Combs for negligent and intentional infliction of emotional distress for 
a lot of this behavior that he says is extreme and outrageous. But speaking of which, Jones is also suing Combs 2 for this same alleged assault by Jane Doe 1 under a premises liability theory. Basically, Jones is arguing that Combs is responsible because this alleged assault happened on Combs's property. He saw this happen, that he had a duty as the owner of the property to protect Jones from harm. That's actually a common theme we see in personal injury cases. If something happens to your guests on your property, your business, your home, you could be legally responsible. Then there is the Cuba Gooding Jr. incident. Oh, yeah. Jones claims he believes Combs was grooming Jones to pass him off to his friends. And he claims that one day on Combs' yacht, Combs suggested that the actor, quote, get to know Jones, left them alone, and then Cuba Gooding Jr. allegedly touched, groped, and fondled Mr. Jones. Jones had to allegedly push him away. Again, there are screenshots of not only Combs and Gooding Jr., together allegedly on that yacht, but also Gooding Jr. and Jones, where you can see his arm around the producer and sitting right next to him. Jones appears to be smiling. One of the causes of action is against Combs, again, for premises liability, because Jones claims Gooding Jr. sexually assaulted and harassed him on Combs' yacht. In the lawsuit, Jones brings up another event, This is a shooting that happened at Chalice Recording Studios in L.A., where after a heated fight between Combs, his son Justin, and Justin's friend identified as G, gunshots rang out. G was lying on the ground with blood coming out of his hip leg area. Jones claims that Combs allegedly told his team to tell police that he had nothing to do with this. And then Jones, in the lawsuit, provided screenshots of the bloodstained bathroom where he claims G was shot by either Combs or his son. And he claims he still has the clothing that you could test for DNA. Now, one of the claims or causes of action in this lawsuit is against Combs and his son, Justin, under California's bystander negligent infliction of emotional distress. This is the idea here is that this shooting of G traumatized Jones and that has caused him to suffer PTSD and depression. And then there is another cause of action against the various entities like Universal Music Group and Motown Records for this shooting, again, under a premises liability theory that they failed in their duty to provide adequate security at Chalice Studios. This shooting could have been prevented. Talking complicated lawsuits, let me just take a minute to thank a team that really knows about the law, Attorney Tom and Associates. They're a great sponsor of this episode of Sidebar. Look, if you find yourself in a position where you need a lawyer, finding the right one can be tricky at times. Well, that is where attorney Tom comes in. So Tom and his team, they have this blend of deep legal knowledge and skills, but they also care. They have genuine empathy for their clients, not to mention a very impressive track record. So whether you were injured in a car accident, a refinery explosion, you got sick because of a drug or exposure, maybe you were the victim of securities fraud or a data breach, attorney Tom can help. Every call is free. It's private. You're going to be speaking with a member of his team straight away. In these times of turmoil, having somebody that you can trust, that's invaluable. And by the way, you won't pay a dime until you win, which just further shows their commitment to your success. And look, if your case not the best fit for attorney Tom and his team, don't worry. Why? Because they still may be able to recommend you a lawyer using their national network of attorneys. With attorney Tom and his team, you're not just hiring a lawyer, okay? No. You're gaining a powerful ally who is committed to justice and your well-being. So if you've suffered an injury and you need legal support, click the attorneytom.com slash sidebar link pinned in the comments for a free consultation or dial 855-TOM-WINS. But moving on, Jones also talks about an event from this past summer, July 2nd, 2023, out in California. He claims that Combs had a party with underage girls and sex workers at his home, and his son and an unidentified R&B artist were there. Now, again, embedded in this lawsuit, in this complaint, are screenshots of a video taken of this party where it allegedly shows Combs either kissing or dancing almost face to face with a purported underage girl. And the thing about the screenshots from these videos too, let me just talk about it. Jones usually claims in the suit that the writer is in possession of the video and this could be provided to court. We don't know exactly at this point what the videos do or do not show or the context or what they can prove, but the screenshots in and of themselves are important to establish what we call in the law a prima facie case meaning at first sight or first impression, the evidence is sufficient to support the claims. Now, moving forward, 
Jones argues that he was working for Sean Combs under an implied work-for-hire agreement. Work-for-hire is when you're paid to create something for somebody else. You don't own the rights to what you create. In this case, Combs would own the rights to the songs that were produced by Jones. But Jones says he wasn't paid for the songs he produced, even though he says Combs and the defendants benefited from his work product. He says he was only offered $29,000 for all of his work over the course of 13 months. And talking about his job duties, during this time that Jones was working with Combs, he states that he was, quote, forced to solicit sex workers and perform sex acts to the pleasure of Mr. Combs. On or about February 2nd, 2023, Mr. Jones believes Mr. Combs drugged him. Mr. Jones recalls waking up naked, dizzy, confused. He was in bed with two sex workers and Mr. Combs. He also recalls aimlessly wandering around the house with no clothes on. Quote, as part of Mr. Jones' sex worker recruitment tools, Mr. Combs provided Mr. Jones with an exclusive bad boy baseball cap and required him to wear it to booby trap on the river. That's a strip club. As a signal to any sex worker, he approached that Mr. Combs was in town and had sent Mr. Jones to recruit them. And you might be saying, well, what happens if Jones refused to do any of this? Well, Jones claims that Combs would use his power and influence to threaten and intimidate Jones. Quote, Mr. Combs would often switch up his approach. He would go from promising Mr. Jones the world to threatening Mr. Jones with physical harm. Mr. Combs threatened to eat Mr. Jones's face and inform Mr. Jones that he is willing to kill his mother, Janice Combs, if he must, in order to get what he wants so he wouldn't think twice to harm Mr. Jones. He claims that he was also told Combs' head of security, Fahim Muhammad, had the power to make people disappear. And keeping up with that theme of instilling fear, Jones said that Combs would show off his guns, that he would brag about shooting people, that he confessed that he was responsible for that infamous 1999 shooting outside of a New York City nightclub. According to Jones, Combs had told him that J-Lo, who Combs had been dating at the time, she was the one who carried the gun into the club for him and passed the gun to him when he got into that altercation outside the club when shots were fired and three people were injured. Jones claims that Combs admitted he forced his artist at the time, Shine, to be the fall guy, to take the blame for the shooting. He was sentenced for 10 years in prison, by the way. Now, Jones claims that with all of this, he was terrified. He was terrified, and we're going to get into why that is important in just a bit. But Jones makes a comparison in this lawsuit to, of all people, Jeffrey Epstein. Yeah, he claims that defendant Christina Corum, Combs' chief of staff, is like Elaine Maxwell, the former associate or madam of Epstein who was convicted of her own sex trafficking-related charges serving a 20-year prison sentence. For instance, when Jones went to Corum to report Combs, she allegedly said, quote, you know, Sean will be Sean. And Jones said that Corum made sure her assistants kept Combs high. She made sure that all the employees would readily carry around drugs for Combs whenever he wanted them. And that included forcing Jones to carry a drug pouch. She also made sure to procure sex workers for Combs. Basically says that she was instrumental in this RICO or criminal enterprise of illicit drugs, guns, sex acts, including facilitating freak-offs, which we had heard of in the Cassie Ventura lawsuit. These are sexual episodes directed by Combs. But now let's talk about, real quickly, some of the more remaining causes of action or claims in this lawsuit. I mentioned there were 15. We've already gone over a bunch of them. But Jones alleges that Combs, his son, various associates, and companies like Motown, Combs Global, Love Records, UMG, they all engaged in illegal racketeering enterprise in violation of the federal RICO statute. And that statute provides someone who is injured a right to sue. Jones argues these companies are liable for the actions of Combs, his son, Corum, because they were all employees or agents of these entities acting on their behalf, that these entities should have been monitoring or warning or supervising what they were allegedly doing. The big thing here is that they were all part of a criminal enterprise, namely making money by forcing and threatening people like Jones to transport drugs and guns, soliciting minors and sex workers, making music without properly paying them. The common purpose of this enterprise is, quote, to enrich themselves financially and sexually at the expense of producers and musicians like Jones. And they claim that Jones was promised cash payments, Grammy awards, access to future projects, access to famous celebrities, and that the defendants profited from this enterprise and that Plaintiff Jones suffered because the enterprise diminished his finances. 
And Jones argues that this criminal enterprise engaged in mail and wire fraud to carry out this scheme. Now, there is another cause of action under the Trafficking and Victims Protection Act, or TVPA. This is a major law that was uh, instituted to fight against domestic and international human slavery. It alleged that Combs and his associates participated in and furthered a sex trafficking venture by forcing and threatening people like Jones and minors to engage in commercial sex acts. The defendants were hiding money. They weren't paying taxes. This was all a dangerous criminal enterprise. And he also alleges that UMG and Motown, and these entities, that they aided and abetted and induced the sex trafficking venture. They violated the law. They benefited from it financially. They obstructed enforcement of the TVPA and that uh, they provided Combs with the cash, the lines of credit, the opportunity to do all this. They concealed his alleged misconduct and his crimes. In fact, Jones says that these defendants should have taken a cue when Jeffrey Epstein was prosecuted. They should have known better. So this is a major lawsuit, right? And what Jones is asking for in this lawsuit, after laying all this out, he is looking for a few things. Among other things, he's seeking a court to make a legal determination that the defendants violated New York law. He is looking for damages to compensate him for lost wages, incomes, but also for mental anguish, humiliation, pain and suffering, distress. He's looking for punitive damages, which is a way to punish the defendants. And we've seen those numbers sometimes far exceed compensatory damages. Look at the Alex Jones case. But he's also seeking medical expenses. He's seeking injunctive relief. That's when you have an order for the court to actually stop somebody from doing something. And I said, look, this is a major lawsuit, but obviously the defendants will have an opportunity to respond. This is usually in an answer to a complaint. It's a formal written response where you either admit or deny each statement in the complaint. And look, what I just laid out are allegations, disturbing allegations, but allegations nonetheless. Jones still has to prove this happened. Defendants could assert that this is all made up or that there is context to all of this, that this is speculation, that the videos, the photos, the screenshots, they really don't show anything. And I also imagine they could argue at trial, we're supposed to believe all these crimes were taking place and Jones didn't report any of it. Could he just be a disgruntled employee? Well, that is why I mentioned before the fear component that Jones brings up. It is so important, the idea that he was threatened, he was afraid to come forward. That's why you hear a lot about this in the lawsuit. And by the way, you also have multiple defendants who may take different actions during the course of this litigation. Possibility of a settlement. You don't want more coming out, especially if Jones claims he actually has videos available proving this alleged misconduct or through the discovery process, he could unearth these allegedly secret recordings from Combs' homes that he allegedly he has. Now, Combs' attorney, Sean Holly, released a statement calling Jones a liar and that he, quote, is shamelessly looking for an undeserved payday. His reckless name dropping about events that are pure fiction and simply did not happen is nothing more than a transparent attempt to garner headlines. Goes on to state, quote, we have overwhelming, indisputable proof that his claims are complete lies. Our attempts to share this proof with Mr. Jones's attorney, Tyrone Blackburn, have been ignored. We will address these outlandish allegations in court and take all appropriate actions against those who make them. Now, as this civil case wraps itself up, something just to think about. As you can tell, there are criminal aspects to these allegations. But we know that the standard of proof is higher in criminal cases. It's proof beyond a reasonable doubt. So even if Jones could prove this in civil court, all you need to show is preponderance of the evidence that more likely than not these things occurred. It doesn't mean that prosecutors would immediately take up these cases against Combs and these defendants. And also there are other considerations like the statute of limitations. Could you even prosecute these crimes? Are they too old? Okay, that was a lot to get through. But thank you so much for joining us here on this episode of Sidebar. Please subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, wherever you get your podcasts. I'm Jesse Weber. Speak to you next time.